Venice. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about Google SketchUp Make. Uh, now Google SketchUp Make is a 3D design program, 2D uh, design layout program that's uh, free of charge via Google. Now simply to download it you need to Google Google SketchUp Make. I've searched it and the first thing that pops up you can download it here. Now, it does come in two versions, Mac and Windows, whatever you are using. The version I'm using today is a Mac version. Um, they also want you to try SketchUp Pro for free for a bit in hopes that you will buy it. Um, I believe SketchUp Make, and hopefully I'll show you, it is enough uh, for your classroom or your applications. So let's just skip ahead here and uh, load up Google Make or SketchUp Make. And there is three uh, uh, sub-programs it does download into your um, computer. And one is layout. Layout looks by its icon a um, layout for home design, room design, uh, laying out space. The style builder is going to help you to design uh, items that could be used in a 3D warehouse that could be shared with other people, things like that, or even 3D printing. So we're always start already starting to get into more of the uh, design and spatial awareness aspect of this for higher level grades and uh, middle school to high school. So making 3D objects and a layout. So we're going to load up Google SketchUp and uh, see what it has to offer. Now it is asking again to buy SketchUp Pro. Well, we might not need that at all. And the 3D Warehouse is cool. We'll check that out later. It is going to want you, if you just click Start using SketchUp, it's going to say pick a template. So I'm going to go over those right now. Templates you have for our, um, choices here are simple template, feet and inches. You have meters. Feet and inches are more of an architectural design. No pretty little grass, which seems to be the only difference. Um, and millimeters, meters. So feet and inches is common for building engineering. A lot of uh, builds will use that unit of measurement. When we're talking about 3D shapes and our um, elementary, primary geometry, even up to high school, we talk about meters in our units of measurement. So I'm going to use feet and inches today. I'm going to start it up here. And when we get into the program, we see our flat grass. We have a character here, and we have our three dimensions, x, y, and z, because it is a 3D program. We also notice that those dimensions go beneath the surface, so we can do negative integers of that. So integers again, we see integers through math always. Um, so we're going to go over the tools here. Selection tool. Selection tool will let you select anything, uh, even this individual here. Now, when we select her, she's all highlighted. And let's say we pick the next tool here, the eraser tool. If we click on her, she's gone. Okay, so eraser tool will erase whatever it is clicked on or selected on. Um, just going to bring her back for a sec. There she is. And you probably wonder why this individual is here. She is here because she's going to make things, and also she's here for scale. All right, her scale, let's just give her a measurement. And she's about 5 foot 6-ish. Okay, that little bow's got her up to 5 foot 6, 5 foot 7. Now, she's there for scale, so when we put an object down, we say, oh, that, should, that car fits in, or that building is about right. Um, so we always want to keep scale in mind. Now, let's go over the tools here. I'm going to click back on the Orbit tool. The toolbar is designed into selection or drawing tools on this side, drawing, drawing. Then we have rotation and movement tools, measurement and labeling tools, painting tool, and then we have a bunch of camera or movement tools, and then our little fun stuff here I'll get into in a bit. So let's start here. You'll be defaulted to this pencil. And what pencil does, it allows you to draw straight lines. I'm not the best at drawing, so this is a big help to me. I've drawn a 2D square on the bottom. The next tool is freehand. Freehand will allow you, if you trust your drawing, to simply just wave about and draw an item. And once again, 2D on the ground. So we talk about 2D shapes. Um, these other drawing tools now, so if we look at the other ones here, we have something called the arc tool. It has three points of reference, so we need to click three times. One, two, and then you see the arc increasing and decreasing. So, so we're using a protractor, so we talk about measurement and protractors. This is also applicable to that. Um, and you've created an arc. Now there are other arcs here. You can do a two-point arc for measurement, three-point arc, and a pi, which fills in the arc with a shape. Now we also have some other drawing tools here. We have a rectangle tool. So if we want to just get a rectangle right away, I'm just, I clicked it once and I'm just dragging. And what it will indicate there, when you have that dotted line intersecting it, it means it's a square. So now I've created a square. 
We also can create a rotated rectangle. It just kind of kicks up the rectangle a bit on an angle. We have a circle tool. You can drag, see, go wall, wall, big, small, big, small. You have your circle tool. And then the last one is a polygon tool. All right. So we can create all those shapes. Now you're probably saying, whoop de doo 2D shapes. I can do that with a lot of programs. Well, now when we get into Google um, SketchUp here, we want to make them 3D. So here's the fun part. This is kind of a little sticky plunger. Whatever it goes on here, it sticks to. I hold the mouse button down, and I can bring it up, or I can bring it down. So we're talking about positive integers and negative. Now, we can make a 3D cylinder here. I can make a 3D whatever that is, uh, a rectangle 3D. Make that really high. And we can make a square under the ground there. Now, I mentioned that this is a sticky plunger and you can change shapes a bit. So let's say I wanted to stick on the side here and pull my shape this way. I also wanted to get my plunger again and pull this side out a bit. So whatever it attaches to, it will pull out. I'm just holding the mouse button down. All right, so that's that tool there. Uh, this tool here is an offset tool. It will actually take your edge and just offset that edge. And if I can pan around here, you notice we have a bit of a lip now there. Okay. Uh, we also now can get into a bit of movement tools. So let's just say I wanted to move something. Simple, right? Just moving up, right, down, left, whatever. Just move your objects around. You can rotate things. This one's a bit touchy at times. So I click the rotation tool, I set a rotation, and then I can start rotating it. The neat thing is, is that the base is sticking because I selected the top. If I wanted to move the base, select the base here, rotate, and then you can move whatever side you pick. Okay, so we talk about points of rotation um, and how that would look. Now we can also just extend things here. All right, and you can slide that. This is just a, you pick a side and you make it larger than the other sides, similar to the offset tool. So we look at that. The offset just moved one side. This actually moves the whole shape and adjusts the whole shape while you're doing it. So you have those there. So these, we have some drawing tools. We have some movement tools. And now let's get into stuff like measurement. When we're talking about shapes here, what we want to do is start measuring them. So let me just, uh, I'll redraw a square. Oh, that's a circle, a rectangle. All right, I'm going to draw a square. I'm going to bring it up a bit so we can work with it. There we go. I'm going to orbit back to it. Okay, we have the square here. You can use the measuring tape to measure things. You saw I measured the, um, the character there. Uh, she was f about five foot seven. Uh, we can start measuring things as a measurement tool. What we also could do at the same time is we could go to Tools and Dimensions. And when you click a line, you can, you can make dimension offsets here. So if I wanted to measure that segment, I could leave it out or measure this whole segment and leave it out as a kind of reference point if I need to prove my 3D geometry or measurement. Um, it does adjust as you go along. So it is adjusting. It's a real-time adjustment. So if you needed your students to prove, you know, draw me a box with length, width, height of this, feet and inches in this case. However, hopefully with the elementaries we're using meters, centimeters, it would adjust to that. They can also label it, okay, and they can label their stuff, uh, whether they just want to label this with a measurement or they want to label it uh, midpoint. Okay, they can do that, midpoint. All right, so they can label all their shapes. Now, what we also have is a paint tool. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but you can just paint surfaces. So if I want to just have a beige surface, you know, you could do that. Kids can get creative. All right. Now we're going to talk about the camera tools, orbit. I'm holding the mouse button down, and it orbits around a center point in all three dimensions. The hand tool will grab and pull, kind of like you're pulling yourself along a rope. Grab and hold, grab and hold. There's a zoom tool for obvious reasons and a zoom and pan tool. So it just kind of kicks me over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the fun stuff. Uh, the fun stuff for kids, I'd say an intro to like some grade three students or younger grade six students, I get them right into this called the 3D warehouse. I would get them to 
explore let's talk about we can even talk about stuff like cars if they're really into cars all right you have a bank full of cars they're really into well let's see all right an audi tt what you can do is they pick the car and they can download it and it's going to ask you do you want it right in your model you click okay i want it right in what it's going to do is going to place it right in your model to scale all right and i hope it's not hiding behind things i should probably clean up my workspace where are you hiding Ah, oh, there it is it's up in space what i'll do is i'll move over and there's my car over here oh it's yeah it's up in space so what we want to do with these models is we need we can build a whole scene with them so you can get all these 3d models in here anything for plants animals buildings you see these buildings students can build cities uh, they can build communities uh, they can recreate their villages whatever they want so you talk to applications about ancient egypt the roman times they're all in here like Colosseum. pardon my spelling Okay, there's all kinds of buildings, and I believe we can get Rome here. People have taken their time to build these, and they will go right into your drawing. So you, children can recreate. Look, someone's recreated the city of Rome. You can drop that in, and students can get the spatial sense of that city. Now, for higher-level students, we talk about design. Um, we can talk about uh, 3D design and building things. So you get simple concepts like wheels. So students could recreate or print out wheels. They could do, um, see if they could do a ball. All these designs are here so that they could print those out. If you create one, you can also submit them to the 3D warehouse. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you before I go is something really neat. So if you kind of done with my lesson, you can tune out now. If you want to stay for something really cool, I'm just going to show you right now.